Today we're going to talk about inverse functions. And inverse functions are simply functions that basically undo each other. So for example, if Homer Simpson were to come into our room and decide to come to the other end of the board, and if he want, then on, on wanted to undo that, what he just did, he would then walk backwards, right back to that side of the board. And so what he did was undo his initial action. Okay, that's enough of that, Homer. Now disappear. Thank you, Homer, for disappearing. So uh, what we want to talk about now is functions in terms of um, mathematics and mathematical functions. So for example, <clears throat> let's say I wanted to find the inverse of this mathematical function, f of x equals x plus 1. So the real question is, how do we undo this function? Well, if you think about it, what you undo do is if you were adding 1 to something, then to undo it, you would subtract 1. So the inverse of this function would be x minus 1. And there's a certain mathematical notation for inverse functions, and it looks like this. Now. Don't be fooled by this negative 1 here. This is not an exponent. Even though it looks like it. It's simply a notation. So the mathematical, nota the mathematical notation for inverse function is simply f to the minus 1 of x. This means... the inverse of f of x. Now, if two functions are inverses of each other, then everything is reversed. So going back to the two functions that we have, that we've written above, we had f of x equals x minus 1, which is the same as writing y equals x minus 1, if we don't put in function notation. And we have y equals x plus 1. And you notice what's happened here is that one that undid the other. Uh, the other thing that we should know about uh, inverse functions is that the domain and range are interchanged. Domain and range. or interchanged or swapped. Now in this case, the domain and range of both these functions are, are all real numbers, so we really can't see that, but in the future we'll, we'll try to uh, give an example of that. So for example, uh, let's say I ask you to find the inverse of the function represented by this table. There's only three points. Now we said that uh, Basically, one undoes the other. The domain and range are swapped. The other thing that I did not say is really that the x's and y's are swapped as well. So in inverses, the x values and y values are swapped. Now, really, if you think about it, that's exactly the same as saying the domain and range are swapped because the domain deals with all the x values and the range deals with all the y values. So let's say I said to you, find the inverse of this function. How would you do it? Well, we have to have an answer down here, so let's just take a look. The solution is this is the numerical representation of a function, as I just said. We, and in order to find the inverse, we simply take each column as a point and reverse them. In other words, you're going to swap the x's and y's. So if the, if the first column is x, the next one is your um, inverse, uh, which is our y, let's see what happened here. Notice in the first one, uh, for f of x, when x is 1, y is 1. Now, obviously, they're the same values, so if the inverse would still be 1, 1. But now let's look at the next one. 
in the original function when x is 2 y is 3 but in its inverse when x is 3 y is 2 notice how we swapped the x and y values we can look at the next one the next point when x is 3 y is 5 in the original function but in the inverse the uh, 3 is now the y value and the y is now the x value and that would be the answer that's how that is that would be the table representing the inverse of the function f of x now we have a graph of a function and the question is how do we find its inverse well remember in order to find the inverse we simply need to swap the x and y values so let's do a couple of these so in this case on the original function we have the point 1 1 now if we were to swap x and y clearly you're still going to get 1 1 so that would stay the same now let's pick another point how about the point 2 this is a little bit more than 1 okay now if we if this is the point let's say let's say it's 2 comma we don't really know exactly what it is but let's say it's 1.1 if we were to interchange those then on the inverse function it would be at 1.1 comma 2 which would mean it would be a little bit more than 1 and somewhere around there 1.1 comma 2 let's do one more let's say I found a uh, certainly at 0 0 0 would still be 0 0 when we interchange the zeros and if we were to interchange uh, let's say at negative uh, 1 Once again, negative 1, negative 1, you interchange that, you still get negative 1, negative 1. Let's go to negative 2. Notice at negative 2, we're at this point, a little bit below negative 1, we'll say negative 2, negative 1.1 approximately. If we were to reverse that, we would be at 1.1 comma negative 2, which is somewhere around about negative 1.1. One, it'd be right there. And let's label that negative 1.1, comma, negative 2. And if we were to connect this, we would get something like the following. Here it comes down this way, and it would be something like that. Now I have a little bit better representation of this, so let's just make that appear. And poof, there it is. So you might notice that I simply reproduced what I drew on the left, on the right, but there's an extra dotted line in there. So what this dotted line is, and let me just draw it again, a little bit bigger and darker for you. This is the line y equals x. And it turns out that when two functions are inverses of each other, they're actually reflections, reflections of each other across the line y equals x. So if I were to look in the mirror, this red line from one side, I would see that it's uh, the inverse of that function on the other side. And if you think about it, it makes sense because if you were to uh, reflect something across the line y equals x, the x and y's get interchanged. So once again, what we had was uh, the original function. We simply swapped the x's and y's. And when we did that, we got the inverse of that function. And every single x and y value on the original function, if you swap those x and y's, you're going to get a point on the inverse function, which is that blue line. So let's summarize what we found. Inverse functions are functions whose independent va uh, variable x and the pen variable y have been interchanged or swapped. The inverse of a graph of a function can be found by reflecting the original over the line y equals x, which is what we just did. And if f and g are inverses,
then we use this notation with a little negative one up there to indicate that g is actually the inverse function of f. So I hope that's clear, and we'll soon find out because, because now it's your turn. So uh, question one, state the inverse of turning on your computer. Question two, I give you a table, and I want you to find its inverse. Question three, I give you a function and see if you can undo that function and find its inverse. And finally, question four, we just did this. See if you can interchange or swap the, each coordinate or several of the, of the points on uh, this function here and see if you can then graph the inverse of this function. So just for example, if I were to take, uh, let's say, this point right here, you uh, estimate what you think the uh, x and y values are, swap those x and y values, plot that, plot it, and do that for several points, connect the dots, and see if you could graph the inverse. I uh, hope that's okay. And if you have any questions, just simply review the screencast, rewind it, and review, review it as you go along trying to do these problems. Good luck, and see you again next time.